I know all the fat acceptance rhetoric and I know why it's not true. <laughs> Mind you, I'm talking about my experiences. These people literally are like foaming, foaming at the mouth to try and find me and catch me in a lie, to try and catch other fat people like in this big lie because they have this belief that all fat people, all people who are fat acceptance people are like lying and we're trying to like manipulate our audience or whatever. And it's like, I, I know when these people are coming from like these anti-fat acceptance, like YouTubers or pages or like literally whatever, because they all say the same thing when they come into my page. And That's really weird that we say all the same things when these, these people are genuinely saying the same things in every single one of their videos. And I don't actually agree with this idea that fat acceptance people are lying to themselves or lying to you to try to like grift their way onto like social media startup or whatever. I genuinely believe that a lot of these people do believe what they are saying is true. And the reason I say that is because oftentimes people put themselves in a bracket, okay? Like you put yourself in a niche. And then when you put yourself in that niche, slowly but surely, even if you don't like that niche, let's say for instance, you don't like cars, but you make one car video on the internet and suddenly all everybody wants to talk to you about is that car video. It's like Harrison Ford, right? Harrison Ford, one of the most prolific actors ever, did Star Wars, okay? But you know he did other movies. Blade Runner, he did a whole bunch of other movies, right? Indiana Jones, he did some Patriots game. He did a whole bunch of movies that were masterpieces, great, amazing pieces of art. But all anybody ever wants to talk to him about is Star Wars, and it puts him in a bracket, and he gets very upset about that because he knows that he's a very accomplished actor, but all anybody ever wants to talk to him about is how he was able to get into the role of Han Solo or, like, all these other characters, right? So it's like that. The more... Except it, they, the difference is Han Solo can, the difference is like Harrison Ford can do other movies, right? These people, they continuously try to milk that well. They continuously try to make more and more of this content. So even if they don't believe that content to begin with, right? It's like Just Pearly Things. If you watch Just Pearly Things at the very beginning of her uh, social media career, she didn't actually believe anything that she was saying. Like she was just saying that shit as a joke. But then as she started getting more and more clout, as she started getting more and more like the, the ball started rolling, she started picking up more steam, she slowly started to believe the shit that she was saying. So when I hear these people say that, I do genuinely believe that they do believe it, but not because it's like a part of them or like they actually research this. No, most of the time, I think that they believe it because they just have to like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like this is like they, they've said the lie so much that it's become their truth at that point. So I do believe Victoria uh, actually does believe what she's saying. Um, very sadly to say, because you're believing something that's fundamentally going to hurt you. At least just pearly things just believes that women are like trash or whatever the fuck. Um, that's not necessarily bad for your health. I mean, it could be kind of bad for your health, depending on like how many people hate you. But for most time, most of the time, it's not going to negatively affect your health. For these people, it's actively hurting them. I thought acceptance like YouTubers or pages are like literally whatever. Because they all say the same thing when they come into my page. And they all do this thing where they genuinely... They, they think that everything that I'm saying is a lie. My I don't think it's a lie, though. I think I, th I do believe that she's actually telling the truth. Like, or I don't think she's telling the truth, but I think that she's proclaiming this to be the truth. And she does believe this to be the truth. I don't think that she's grifting. Like, I don't think that she's saying all this shit just to get clout, fame, whatever the fuck. I do genuinely believe that she is saying this. They all do this thing where they genuinely, they, they think that everything that I'm saying is a lie. Mind you, I am literally just speaking about my experiences. I'm literally just trying to live in the world as a fat person. It's I hate when people do this, right? I hate when people try to belittle their claims or belittle themselves to make it seem like whatever they're saying is not as valuable as what they just said before. Because I see this consistently where somebody said somebody gets called out for something they said, right? And they'll go, why are you taking what I said seriously? I'm just a random guy on the internet that's making videos with my camera. Like, don't say, don't take anything I say seriously. And it's like, bro, you just said like 15 death threats. 15 death threats. What are you talking about? Obviously, people are going to take it serious. The same thing here. You're not just some random person on the internet. Obviously, your words have a lot of value, right? You saying these things on the internet are going to convince a lot of people. So when you say, I'm just talking about my experiences, bullshit. You're not just talking about your experiences, dude. You're literally telling people you're advocating for the acceptance of fat people. You're, you have an agenda. You're pushing a particular set of rules and regulations that you, in your mind, think is appropriate. So you can't just sit there and try to make it seem like whatever you're saying is like, oh, no, it's just like it's my experience. It's not like, it's not that big. It is that big, dude. You, you, what you're what you're saying, you're convincing people. You're definitely you're definitely 100% like at the forefront of this organization. So when you say that shit, you do understand that that's gaslighting. That's why would you do that, dude? Why? Stop doing that, okay? But man up a little bit, dude. Put up, say with your chest. You believe what you believe. Stop acting like such a little pussy. Just say what the fuck you're saying, okay? Stop trying to act like you're just a random person on the internet. You're not. Your words have a lot of value.
I am trying to be okay and comfortable in my body. And these people genuinely get so angry. The reason why a lot of people do get angry at the words that Victoria says, or a lot of these people in this particular community, is because a lot of the time they tend to externalize a lot of their issues where they don't have to. They can internalize a lot of them. So, like, for instance, these people will say things like, I'm just trying to live in a very fat phobic, systemically, you know, against my body type uh, society. And most of the problems that they have within that society framework are things that they can alleviate themselves. Like, for instance, they often say medical fat phobia or inability to get jobs because I weigh too much or or um, there should be more accessibility devices for fat people. Like all this stuff is not necessarily bad, but all that stuff could be alleviated by your own free will. And instead of putting all of your problems on the wider society, because it's super easy to do that, by the way, like just to sit there and say like, I can't do anything for myself. I'm going to let somebody else do it for me. When in reality, that person or persons are never going to do that because they don't even know you. Like you're, you're, what you're basically doing is playing the lottery ticket and that lottery ticket, it's never going to win. So it's very easy for these people to take their own responsibilities and put it on society and say they need to change for me. And they never do it themselves because if they did it themselves, they could actually make life better for themselves. Like they constantly complain about this shit when the reality of the situation is you're complaining about this, right? But it could literally just be gone if you just chose to lose weight. I get that you don't like this, the fact that society is fat phobic or whatever the fuck you want to say. But the reality of the situation is it's not fat phobic. You're dying. And the, 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 everything that you're going to do at that size, I don't care if you're in a society or not, dude, you're so, and you're living on hard mode to such a degree that it doesn't matter what you do. It's going to be difficult. Everything you do is going to be difficult because of the size that you are. So when you sit there and go, society needs to change this for me, you can say that until you're blue in the face. It's never going to happen because what you're, what, you, what you're actually doing is taking your own responsibility and putting it on somebody else. It's too external. Stop externalizing your problems. Actually make your own problems your problems. If you have a problem with your weight and you can't walk upstairs and you're out of breath by the third step, guess what? Losing weight is going to help you with that. If you have a problem putting your light up and over the, the, the barrier into your tub, guess what? It's not society's fault that we built our fucking tubs like that. It's your fault for being so fat that you can't lift up your own leg. These things are issues that you have to solve. It's not society's issue. It's your issue. Because they, they, they are made to think, they are manipulated into thinking that I am some manipulative person that is lying and that I'm not actually confident, that I actually hate myself and I, I'm trying to, what, manipulate people into being okay with their body? She, okay, look, she can say, she could say whatever the fuck she wants to say here, but again, she's trying to downgrade what she's actually doing, right? It's like somebody saying something like, oh, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just saying that there's differences, right? Like, that's like, okay. Like Nick Fuentes, right? You guys know who Nick Fuentes is? Like very often you'll find Nick Fuentes saying like black people are inferior. Their mental capacity is diminished compared to white people. They don't, they don't, they don't bring to the same table that white people do, right? He'll say this stuff. But if you ask him about it and you go, tell us, tell us about what you think about black people. Go, oh, I just think that there's fundamental differences between white people, black people, Asian people. And I think that, you know, there, there's just differences and that, you know, people are raised differently. Maybe the culture is different. Like there's some genetic differences too. Like, you know, black people are black, obviously and white people are or why like it's so pussy it's so fucking pussy because that's what i'm hearing from this person i'm just what am i doing i'm just trying to you know help people live their lives i'm just trying to help people get you know be more comfortable in their body that's not what you're fucking doing and stop acting like this is like uh, stop acting like you're so you're like, such a bitch about this shit okay just say what the fuck you said with your whole chest you're not saying that you're trying to help people with their bodies or identifying with a more confident personality no you're advocating for people to be fatter. You want people to be fatter. And you're you're okay with these people sustaining that size for a prolonged period of time because they're more confident in their body or they're more accepting in their body. It's fine to be accepting of your body. That's fine. But you can't sit there and claim that these people are healthy or you can't sit there and claim that these people are going to be okay for the prolonged lifespan. Like, it's mental health is great. I agree. Everybody should have good mental health, right? But you're, what you're actually saying is like, there should be some give and take in the sense of like, you should, you should 100% be okay at 400, 500 pounds, as long as you're mentally okay, which those two things cannot be synonymous. If you're four, three, if you're three, four, 500 pounds, and you're telling me your mental, your mental status is, is stable. That's a lie. You're just there. What it actually is, is you're probably gaslighting yourself into believing that it is, or like you're having a really hard time. And deep down in your psyche, you know, you're doing something wrong because obviously if you're 400 fucking pounds, you're going to have a hard time doing literally anything in the world so yes you're going to be seeing on a daily basis and so don't sit there don't don't sit there and try to pro proclaim that you're all you're doing is trying to make people be happier in their bodies that's 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 some bitch ass shit no that's bitch ass shit dude you're you're lying stop trying to stop trying to make it seem like you're doing something that you're not that i actually hit myself and I, i'm trying to what 
manipulate people into being okay with their body or oh promote obesity which like what does that mean promoting obesity is basically like okay i'm not one of these people that are going to sit there and tell you that just because you're fat you're promoting obesity you are to a certain degree like you're advocating for it you're eating like this like depending on where you're about but if you're not a big social media person it's really not that big of a deal like live your best life hashtag slay queen edges but if you're a social media influencer such as victoria who's a big social media influencer with like hundreds of thousands of followers on tiktok and other platforms yes the words that you say are going to be 100 percent more valuable than the regular person on the street saying that their penis is purple like you you do understand that your words are going to hold more value because you have a wider audience in a wider a wider reach and i'm not look i'm 100 percent a free speech advocate but even i know that freedom of speech can lead to some downstream effects i'm not one of these people that sits there and goes all speech is good speech some speech is bad speech okay like i'll give you an example when like Alex Jones said that the Sandy Hook school shooting was not real, right? There was a lot of people that believed that. There was a lot of people that genuinely believed what he said was true, right? But guess what? Obviously it was true. The point I'm making is you can say a lot of things and sit there and go, oh, I'm, I, but like, don't believe me or like, well, what am I actually doing? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not actually saying anything bad. Dude, you are saying shit bad, okay? So if you sit there and go, be comfortable in your body, it's okay that you're 400 pounds, it's okay that you're monstrously unhealthy, it's okay that you're in and out of the hospital on a daily basis, it's okay that you are out of breath from just simply getting up out of bed and walking over to the bathroom to take a piss or a shit, like that stuff, all that stuff is really damaging. It's really damaging. So. I get what you're saying, but you're not in that same realm as like a normal person living their life in that particular that particular way. You have a lot more value on the words that you speak, and you have to be very particular on the way that you say these words because somebody might interpret those words in a wrong way, and it's 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 very uh, fucked up to sit there and say that your words don't have as much value as like, dude, you're you're in a different classification, okay? You're a social media influencer. You can't sit there and say that like, oh no, what are you talking about? I'm not I'm not really saying anything crazy. Yes, the fuck you are. Like <laughs> your words are fucking extreme to a different degree just own it though like it's fine right say the fuck what you want to say just own it just own that shit say what your fucking chest say what your fucking chest dude that's all i want that's all i want just own that shit manipulate people into being okay with their body or oh promote obesity which like what does that mean if you want to worry about someone promoting obesity get mad at the food industry in the united states at all it's like look i can't get mad at the food industry in the united states because these are big giant corporations right and it's fine if you want to go after these big corporations and it's fine if you want to attack these big corporations and companies that have all this big influence and things like that but when somebody says that it's so disingenuous because what they're actually saying is like i know i'm saying really fucked up stuff and i know i'm saying really really bad and disgusting hurtful things but like look at this this is way worse right Yes, you are correct. These big companies doing all this terrible, outrageously terrible, disgusting stuff, it is worse than what you're saying. But that doesn't take away from the disgusting, terrible, disgusting stuff that you're saying. You know, like, it, what are you talking about, Victoria? The, the, you do realize what you just said was actually throwing yourself under the bus. And all you're doing is like, I don't know, like a red herring. Like, oh, don't look at me. Look at that. Okay, Victoria. All right. Okay. All the corn syrup in our food. At all the corporations that are literally like, pouring sugar into everything that don't get mad at me no victoria that's not how that works you're gonna have to be held accountable for the things that you say that's not how that fucking works that's so crazy bro don't get mad at me even though i said a whole bunch of terrible disgusting stuff and people genuinely believe that i'm a bad person and they have good proof to prove it but don't get mad at me because there is somebody way worse than me like hitler hitler was way worse look i know i know i killed 15 people but hitler killed like millions like i mean if that's we're being honest i really didn't even kill anybody if that's okay that's basically what i'm hearing from you like you can you at least acknowledge that that's that's ridiculous like are we just gonna completely ignore your crimes even though that so your crimes are a complete mute compared to somebody else's crimes because they did way worse than you okay victoria that's how it works huh that's great that's great that's beautiful that's a that's a great way of that's a great way of thinking about it the corporations that are literally like pouring sugar into everything that don't get mad at me when i talk i'm not saying i want you to become fatter my goal is to make you fat literally my only goal is to make people okay in the bodies that they exist in. yeah but you do understand that okay look i'm not saying that she does or does not say that she wants people to become fatter but she's 100 percent advocating for people to stay at the sizes that they are and most of the time because of her audience there are people that are overweight she'll say things like it's fine to be the size don't look at yourself as lower it's fine as whatever and there could be some value in that like don't get me wrong if you want to be fat you could totally be fat but i think that there's a big disconnection here when this person says this shit because what they're what they're actually trying to do here is trying to make it seem like they're actually not doing something bad when they are doing something bad you are telling people 
to be comfortable in their bodies. If somebody is 400 pounds and they're struggling to do literally everything in their fucking life and you're telling them they're perfect exactly in their body and they should feel comfortable, how the fuck are they going to feel comfortable if they can't feel comfortable? You're, what, you're what you're basically doing is just reconfirming their already terrible lifestyle. That's bad. You understand that? That's like telling a drug addict, oh yeah, you're, you're, oh, you're doing tons of drugs and it's like literally negatively affecting you and your teeth fell out three years ago. You're perfect. You're, you know what? Be comfortable. That it's such a comfortable lifestyle. Would you say that to a person that's literally a crack addict? No, you would obviously. So why would you be saying that to the person that's 300, 300, 400, 500 pounds? Like on the surface, a lot of this stuff is fine. Like if you say it to somebody, you should feel comfortable in your own body. You should be fine the way that you look right now. You should be comfortable, like all this stuff, right? On the surface, it's fine. But when you go a little deeper, you realize, no, this shit has super malicious intent. It's okay to feel comfortable in your body, but you should at least understand that there are things that you can change and you should change. If you want to change those things, especially if they're in the realm of unhealthiness. So if you want to become healthier and you want to become thinner, you should want to do these things. It's actually a very terrible thing to sit there and say, feel comfortable. You're perfect. You're amazing. Exactly the way you are. That is actually terrible information. That's something you tell to a seven year old and they don't even believe that shit because it's like, what do you mean? I, what do you mean? I could be the president of the United States. I'm missing both my arms and I was born in India. What are you talking about? So it's like, yeah, dude, it's like the information that you're giving is not necessarily bad, but it's not necessarily bad for most people, but it is bad if, if somebody actually looks below the surface. I just want you to be happy as you are. And that is literally, literally saying, I want you to be happy exactly the way you are. There are people that actually have bad behaviors and bad behaviors that should not be replicated. And when you tell somebody, I want you to be happy exactly the way you are, that is not good information, dude. Okay. Look, if when everybody knows this, when you're in a relationship, right, there are going to be things about yourself that you don't consider to be bad, but when you get into a relationship with somebody, you realize, holy shit, I have these bad behaviors that are negatively affecting the person that I'm with and I need to adjust these things. I need to change these things. That's a prime example of some things that need to change, right? And it's a good idea to change. You're not supposed to be the same person that you were when you were 15, 18 years old, when you're 30. That's bad. That means that you had no growth, okay? And the only growth that these people seem to be capable of is literally growing outward physically. That's not good, okay? So if somebody hears you should be comfortable or you should feel confident or you should feel like great exactly the way you are, that's not good information, dude, because if there is something genuinely wrong with that person, they're not going to do anything about it because they just deemed that what you just said was, well, I'm good. I'm perfect. I'm perfect exactly the way I am. So like, I understand what you're saying, Victoria, but it's not good information. Okay. If you want, if you're literally unhealthy and you're struggling with stuff, lose some weight, Come, become healthier, get in a calorie deficit, walk more. There are plenty of things that you can do. Okay. And if you know it's a problem, then you know, it's a problem, dude. I 99% of fat people know it's not good to be fat, but when they hear you say that shit, it just reconfirms their already bad biases okay in the bodies that they exist i just want you to be happy as you are and that is literally like would you say that to a crackhead like i just want you to be happy exactly the way you are oh really oh, oh really wow okay let me just inject myself with a little bit more heroin because i'm happy when i'm doing that literally all i want to do that's it sorry i just have no interest in hating my body for the rest of my life i apologize it's fine nobody's telling you to hate your body look you can acknowledge that your body is great and amazing and beautiful but also acknowledge that there are things about it that you have to change okay like victoria i get it like you're <sighs> Victoria, I understand it, but you also have to understand you're unhealthy. You're really unhealthy. And sure, there could be other things that you're focused on right now that you could be working on that would improve your health status across the board. But you can't not acknowledge that the weight is a major negative, a major debuff on your health. Like what you're actually telling people is to completely ignore this giant, this insanely large debuff on their health bar on a daily basis because accept your body, you know, hashtag yes queen. Like, what are you talking about? No, dude, absolutely not. Dude, this is a fucking giant problem. No pun intended. If that's an inconvenience for you, but your feelings are not my problem. True, your feelings are not my problem should be summed up by this entire thing. She's literally gaslighting people into thinking that she's actually saying something that she's obviously not saying. She's, she's literally trying to belittle what she actually says because somebody called her out on the things that she said. Here's I have a Jen question and I've asked this one before and no one answered me in America. Is it fat phobic if you speak about obesity and the dangers of being obese? Because if being fat and obese is diff, yeah, 100%. Um, being fat and obese are 100% different. Like if you're a little bit over, if you're like 10, 20 pounds over, you're probably okay. Once you get into the realm of obesity, yeah, dude, that's a fucking issue. And uh, you know it's an issue. Most people know that it's a problem. Here's the thing, when thin people- You know what's also really interesting about these people? One thing I've, I've come to realize is that these people like mid-max themselves in so many weird ways, right? So like when I look at Victoria, 
I see a person that's literally fundamentally suffering on a daily basis. Super obese, super massive, probably has a hard time breathing, probably has a hard time walking, probably has a hard time doing literally anything, but her hair is amazing. How the fuck are we min-maxing things that literally have no... I'm, I'm happy that Victoria has great hair. I mean, lubricated beyond belief, absolutely amazing defined curls. You could tell she actually takes a lot of time in researching her hair, but yet she has no problem completely ignoring the fact that her body is ungodly levels of unhealthy. So it's like, it's so weird to me how you can get your nails done, you can get like your hair done, you can get your hair done, right? You can get your, all this stuff. But your body is just like negative 15, but your, but your hair is like plus 15. What the fuck is going on there, dude? Like, where is the, there, there's, there's an order of operations, right? And sometimes, don't get me wrong, sometimes people spend money on things that they shouldn't spend money on, or sometimes people do things out of order, right? But for, for Victoria to be focused on things that literally have absolutely no value in the sense of like, why the fuck are you even getting your hair done if you're like a fucking, if you're like a two, on a, a two out of ten? What are we doing, dude? Lipstick on a pig type shit. And it's fine if you think you're very beautiful, but the point I'm making is, even aesthetically, it doesn't make sense. And health-wise, it most definitely doesn't make sense. Like, can you imagine going to the doctor and going, the doctor going, hey, you need to really, you know, become healthier, you're really unhealthy right now. Um, you know, what do you think you're going to do to become healthier? And you go, I'm going to like go and get a perm or I'm going to like make sure my curls are really defined and I'm going to get my nails done at this Vietnamese salon. Oh, okay. I mean, I was really just talking about how deep your belly button was like 20 seconds ago. It's like literally 19 inches deep and your gut literally protruded out so far that when you walked in, I thought you were just an amorphous blob for 20 seconds because you had so much gut, but then I realized you had a face. Oh, my bad. Like you understand like where, where, how do you, how do you have this? Like, hair first, and then bodies, like, all the way at the end? What the fuck is going on there? Come to talk to fat people about the issues with obesity. They are almost never, ever saying something that we don't already know. That's so bad, though. If I'm going to keep it a solid buck with you, and you know I always keep it a buck with you guys, if you, if somebody's telling you something that you already know, and these things are problems, and you know them to be problems, and you already know that to be true, and you do nothing about it, to me... You can do whatever you want. Live your best life. Hashtag slay queen edges, right? You're a queen. But um, to me, it just kind of seems really, really crazy, dude. Like if I talk to a drug addict and I said, hey, bro, do you know these drugs are bad? And they go, yep, I know these drugs are bad. That's fine. Do your drugs. I don't care. It's your life. You do whatever you want. I'm not going to do that shit. It's fucking terrible. But these people are not like on social media proclaiming that drugs is good. Do drugs. They're so delicious. In your mouth. Oh, I love heroin. I And it's just so great when I ingest it. I don't know how you do heroin. But the point I'm making is, like, these people, like, if you know it's bad, you know it's bad. But it's really bad to know that it's bad and then do social media proclaiming it's good. Right? Because growing up fat means that you are so cognizant of your health and of the issues with obesity. And you know what's going on. I probably have more. Can you, un can, like, it's so crazy to sit there and say, I know there's something wrong with my body, but fuck it. Like, I, I have an in-depth, cyclopedic knowledge on the negative effects of obesity, but, oh, well, like, is that really where we're going with this shit, dude? Are you really about to tell me that you know that there are negative effects of obesity, you know that this is literally life-threatening, and you just still do nothing about it? It's interesting. It's just really interesting, Victoria. Like, I love that thought process. Of the issues with obesity, and you know what's going on. I probably have more understanding of nutrition than the average thin person because of the amount of nutritionists and dietitians and like personal trainers that I have personally seen. Which is not good, by the way. That's terrible, dude. At least if you're ignorant, you're ignorant. I can't blame you if you're ignorant. If you don't know something, you don't know something. But if Victoria is literally out here telling me that she has like all this knowledge and she had people in her life helping her and here she is still obese, massive, ginormous, and still does nothing about it, like, that's really terrible. That's really bad. Like, that is actually really, really disgustingly terrible. I stopped dieting in the last six years, and this is the first time in my life that I have been a like, consistent, maintained weight. Up until six years ago, I was consistently, my entire life, gaining weight. I, I think that sometimes people say things, and they think that it's good, but, they're, but like, oh man, it's like, when you play when you play a game, right, like Yu-Gi-Oh, um, I know this is like a weird reference here, but when you play a game like Yu-Gi-Oh, right, oftentimes, in order to play the game accurately, you have to read the cards, but sometimes it's about what they don't say rather than what they do say, right? So when somebody when somebody when you're reading a card that says cannot be destroyed by battle, okay? Well, 
just because it can't be destroyed by battle doesn't mean I can't banish it. Doesn't mean I can't remove it from play. Doesn't mean I can't spin it back to the hand, right? There are plenty of other things that I can do. So you have to be very particular about the things that they don't say. So when you hear somebody say, like Victoria says here, I, for the first time in six years, right? For six years, my weight has stayed the same. But before this point, my weight was fluctuating. What she's actually saying is that she's maintained this, this size because of her eating habits, but before she was actually trying. But it's really sad to say that shit. You know, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. Um, at least you were trying before. I understand that maybe it was tough for you to consistently lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. But, like, what is the alternative? You literally just sitting here for six years, sedentary, stayed at this weight. I don't know how much you weigh. Maybe 400 pounds, maybe a little bit more. You, you maintaining 400 pounds is actually life-threatening. I would have much rather you prefer to try to lose weight. And I, this is, like, one of the things I hate the most is that they'll sit there and they'll say this. If you try to lose weight, right, you'll maybe lose the weight for a little bit of time, but then eventually you'll gain that weight back. And then at the end of that life, at the end of that cycle, you'll maybe have gained more weight than you would have if you just stayed at that same weight. And that is so terrible because what you're actually doing is encouraging people to just stay the weight that they are because out of the fear of being worse than they actually are right now, when the reality of the situation is if you lose weight, that's only beneficial, especially if you're somebody that's 400, 500, 600 pounds. Like there's literally nothing but benefit, even if you do keep it off for one year, two years, five years, like that's nothing but benefit. So when I hear people say this shit, it's all about what they don't say. It's all about how they phrase the words and the terminologies here. Because I would always... Gain weight, gain weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight. That, that just screams to me that like, even though you sit there and you tell me that you know exactly you have more nutritional understanding than the average person, I don't disagree with you because most people in today's world have absolutely no idea what even a calorie is. So <laughs> great. Yes. Awesome. You know about that. But that just screams to me. You had no idea what you were doing when you try to lose weight. It's not so much about... <sighs> It's not about going to the gym. A lot of people think that it's about going to the gym. It's not so much about going to the gym. It's not so much about exercise. It's about the diet. It's about being consistent with the diet too. Like you can't just go on these fad diets or these like, oh, I'm just going to fast for like three days. And then by the end of that three days, you're going to slosh down like 40,000 calories. Like, cause a lot of people have that cycle where they just, you know, perpetually fucking body slam 20,000 calories after not eating for two days or something like that. But if you're doing that, it's about consistency. It's about a slight calorie deficit. If you're used to eating 5,000 calories a day, lower it by 20. I mean, lower it by like 300, 400 calories, dude. 20, 40, 47 calories, 4,700 calories, 4,600 calories. Do that consistently until you start losing weight. And then when you start losing weight and you hit that plateau, lower it slightly, lower it slightly. Keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. It might take a long time. It probably will take a long time depending on how much you weigh. But guess what? You're becoming drastically healthier as you do it. Because guess what? It's not a good idea to consistently walk around two, three, four hundred pounds overweight consistently all the time it's not good for you there's literally no benefit to it either like you're not getting anything out of it you're just over encumbered perpetually for your whole life for no other reason than you like food and i get it food tastes good in my mouth too i love nutritionally stuff in my face full of a delicious d delicacies i get it but it's not that worth it it's not worth it to be overweight it's not worth it to have all these problems but that 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 weight that I, I kind of, you know, after I lost and I gained, I, I was always more than what I had started off with, right? So I had a really, really bad relationship. It's just all I hear from, oh, man, these people have such problems, bro. Like what I'm actually hearing is when I incorrectly, when I dieted incorrectly and I had, I was doing drastic things and I was, I was really just becoming a person that I didn't want to, I didn't want to become and I was doing it incorrect. I gained more weight at the end of it, so I just decided to give up. So you did it wrong, and then you thought the, because you did it wrong, the solution was to do nothing. Okay, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Definitely good, Victoria. You're good. You're good. ...with food, and it wasn't until I started to decide that I wasn't going to diet anymore, and I was going to eat intuitively and... Man, look, eating intuitively could work for some people. It's it's probably okay for a lot of people, sure. But if you already have a problem with food, if you guys don't know what intuitive eating is, it's basically just you eat when you're hungry and you eat until you're full. That's basically it. And that could be not a problem if you already had a pretty good understanding of food and like what is and what is not okay. Um, but if you're sitting here and you're 400 pounds, I know you have a problem with that because 
intuitive eating and what like what are you eating donuts the entire fucking time dude like what like i can eat a lot of fucking donuts before i realize it's bad for me or like until i'm full you know what i'm talking about like i can I easily eat three or four or five donuts bro i can probably body slam a box of pizza no problem and that's like two thousand calories so when i hear somebody say like i'm i'm practicing intuitive eating and they're obese bro it's not working i'm gonna keep it a buck it's not good for you it's not something that you should be doing i don't know what else the fuck i tell you you're maintaining this weight you're telling me for six years you wait you maintain this weight because of intuitive eating maybe try something else that's fucking terrible dude what the fuck are you doing in a day how much are you eating you're not monitoring your calories at all you don't even understand what you're fucking eating you're eating until you're full dude look sometimes your body lies to you sometimes when you when you eat until you're full that's not necessarily what actually means full sometimes and a lot of times these people have trained their bodies to understand that eating three, four, five, six, seven times the portion sizes is a normal portion size for them because you're doing it so consistently. When I was gaining my weight, dude, I maybe ate like one time a day when I was like 110 pounds or less, right? But when I started eating more, it was hard. It was so hard because I had never eaten three, four times in a day. I've only ever eaten like one time in a day, right? So I was used to eating that one time. It was really hard for me to eat two, three, four times. I had to literally stop, put the meals down, come back to it, eat it again, you know, because I had no appetite. But guess what? After a month of doing that, after two months of doing that, I had an appetite and I was, I was able to eat regular portion sizes. I was able to actually body slam the food, right? Because I wasn't able to do that before. The point I'm making is here, how do you know that you're actually full if you've eaten like this for literally years at a time? Here in America and most westernized countries, our portion sizes are ridiculous. We have no idea what an actual portion size is. We have no idea what a calorie is. And you're sitting here proclaiming that intuitive eating is, is the bee's knees. When in reality, you have no idea what's going on with your body, dude. That is just, it, it, you have literally ignorance. But go ahead, go off, queen. Feel my own feelings in relationship with food that is like what the best that i could have done for my health i just i i just have to disagree dude i just have to disagree i would have to see what you like i would have to see really what the health status was looking like those six years ago dude if you're telling me that this was the best course of action for you was to just eat whatever the fuck you want to eat whenever you want to eat it there's no that i would have to really see what the fuck you were talking about there right and people love to come onto my page and act as if I do not know what health issues are associated with being fat. There are fat people that work out, that eat healthy, that, you know, go to the gym. It's, it's such a disingenuous claim to say that shit. Like, I agree there are these people that are fat and go to the gym. But these are the minority people, dude. And then also it's, like, weird as fuck to be 300, 400 pounds going to the gym and not losing weight. Like, sure, I guess there are people that do that stuff. But like what is even the point of saying this shit like that doesn't make any sense at all like i get what you're i understand what you're saying but that's like saying like oh no murderers are great people because i saw a murderer one time give a flower to a fucking nine-year-old girl and he said he was you know like oh wow you look pretty today like yes i get it like there are you know like i just <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i get it but this is also like so what i don't give a fuck with being fat there are fat people that work out, that eat healthy, that, you know, go to the gym, that, that, that skip eight hours. Now, I'm going to keep it a buck. If you're fat and you're, you're still fat, like if you, okay, like if you're not in the process of losing weight and you're eating healthy and you're still fat and you're gaining weight, you're not eating healthy. By definition, that cannot be healthy. You might be eating healthy foods, but I would love to see to what degree you're eating those healthy foods because it cannot be possible to be fat and then also eat healthy. Hours of sleep at night, like, you know what I mean? Like, Unless you're losing weight. There are... Fat people that I believe are healthy. That's, it just depends on what you mean by fat, dude. I'm gonna have to know exactly what you mean. What's your terminology? I would love to break that down for you. If you're talking about somebody that's like 10, 20, 30 pounds over and they're, you count them as fat, fine, fine. They're healthy. I'll agree with you. But if you're talking about somebody of your size and you consider them to be healthy, oh, wow. That, really, that's interesting. And you know what's really interesting about this too? Also, these people are incredibly ambiguous by the ways that they use these words. Ambiguous, really ambiguous. If they're fat, they're healthy. Dude, let's talk about obese. Uh, can they be healthy while obese? Can we say that? Can, can we say somebody that is 200 pounds over? Can we say somebody that's 100 pounds over is healthy? Can we say that? Can we? Can we? Can we, Victoria? Can we say somebody that's 120, 130, 200 pounds over? Can we say that they're healthy? Can we say that? Can we? I am very mentally ill. That's just beautiful. I mean, that should be the start of the video right there. I 
am very mentally ill. That should just be the start of the video right there. Beautiful, amazing, spectacular. I love, look, I have no problem with people being mentally ill. I mean, obviously it's not a good thing, but if you're mentally ill, there's nothing you can do about it. I just hate when people proclaim that they're mentally ill as like a cop out for the reasons why they believe what they believe. And it's like, Sometimes I wish people would just own the fuck what they would say and then not use that cop out. You know, like I'm not saying that people that do have mental illnesses shouldn't give shouldn't be given a little bit more leeway or whatever. But sometimes I hear people saying the most disgusting, vile, terrible shit. And they'll use it as like a, a, a get out of jail free card to say, well, don't think anything I'm saying is serious. Don't say don't take anything I'm saying serious because I have a mental illness. It's terrible. It's really bad. And a lot of these people do know what they're doing and they just use it as a get out of jail free card. It's really gross. Don't really go to the gym, have a really bad sleep schedule, have like violent ADHD that impacts every single aspect of my life. Like, And you're fat. That shit is crazy. How much you want to bet like almost all that stuff is going to be negatively affected by the fact that you're fat? Probably don't want to go to the gym because when you move yourself in general, it's probably really uncomfortable. So why the fuck would I go to the gym? By the way, going to the gym is not necessarily inherently mean that you're healthy. It doesn't. I'm sick of people thinking that going to the gym is like a somehow like a 10% buff to your health status. It's not. That's not how that fucking works. Sleep schedule, not getting eight hours every single night. I bet it's probably because you need a CPAP or you have extra weight. Your hormones are probably ridiculously out of order. I bet that, you know, again, probably has a lot to do with your obesity. Your health status is literally within question daily. So you have all that stuff going on. I bet most of that stuff has to do with your weight. I'm not joking. My, most of my health, my, the worst part of my health isn't even my fatness, it is my ADHD. That's, right? uh, oh man. I'm just sick of people g gaslighting or like saying, it's it's like, it's not not true, but it's also not not true, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm a lot of people have presumed that I have ADHD. I don't know if I do or do not, I don't know. Uh, this is like how I've always acted for my whole entire life. I was going to get a diagnosis, but it turns out that the insurance that I have was not going to cover the particular procedure that I would need to get the whatever diagnosis. So I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to do it. But regardless, um, when we're talking about people with ADHD, um, it's fine, right? I mean, it sucks that you have ADHD, obviously. And there's a lot of people out there that think it's like a superhero or like a superpower. In reality, it's obviously not. Like you have absolutely no sense of accomplishment, like struggling with that shit. And I could probably profess to that. Like I literally struggled in school. I sucked at school. Um, I felt no value in doing it. I literally failed so many of my classes because I didn't want to do any of this stuff. I couldn't find any value in sitting down for eight, nine hours a day doing the fucking work or sitting day, like at home. Like I'm not doing that shit. It's like no value for me. But anyway, maybe I do have ADHD. I don't fucking know. But definitely when it comes to people that have like particular mental illnesses, I, I do find them quite a bit saying this shit. Like, oh no, it's not actually my physical. It's not the physical problem. It's my mental problem. I'm not doubting that you have mental illnesses. I'm not doubting that these are debilitating conditions that are hurting you. But if you're going to sit there and you're going to self-acknowledge these issues and you're going to self-diagnose them, you're going to tell me that these are problems, but you're not going to tell me about the problems that of your weight, I just, you're obviously cognitively sound enough to understand this stuff. How are you not cognitively understanding the fact that the weight is also a giant issue, no pun intended? Right, because it impacts every aspect of my life. So when you- The weight is also going to impact every- It's just interesting. It's just really interesting how these people word this shit. Come into a fat person's comments. Like, I, me and my doctor, like, we are locked in. We- I have regular checkups. I have regular blood work done. I, like, I take my medication. Like, I- me and my doctor, we talk about my shit. You know what I mean? I, you don't need to know the details of my personal health. You're right. But you also have to understand that when you make the particular content that you do, that you are inviting people to talk about your health, right? It's it's obvious. It's like somebody making content about being a swimsuit model and then getting mad at those people talking about, oh, wow, you have a, you have a lot of curves. And they get, upset, they get upset by that. What are you talking about, dude? Obviously, if you're talking about the negative effects of obesity or you're inviting people to talk about health statuses or you're talking about the, the effects of being fat or being thinner, whatever, like that's literally all your content is. Um, obviously, people are going to be talking about it. It's just like crazy the fuck that you wouldn't be expecting that stuff. That's yes, naturally, naturally. I just hate the fact that these like... What is the purpose of you saying this shit? Like, do you honestly believe that people shouldn't be talking about your health status even though you yourself talk about it in your videos? How the fuck does that even make any sense at all? Like, you're literally inviting people to talk about it. It's a public platform. What do you fucking want? Like, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's like somebody having a whole channel dedicated to Yu-Gi-Oh! And then in the comment section telling people, don't comment on the Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff. That's really insensitive. I'm more than my Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff. What the fuck are you doing? This entire channel is dedicated to that shit. The content that you're putting out is that. It just doesn't make sense. I just don't understand it. I just really don't. And I think it's a stupid point. You know what I mean? I, you don't need to know the details of my 
person. And by the way, I also want to point out if your doctor has no problem with you being fat or like you guys are not talking about you losing weight at all, you probably should get a new doctor. That's terrible. No health. And when you come onto a fat person's page and say, did you know that's actually bad to be obese? Bitch, like we are very well aware of our health. Right? Yes, but it's like, okay, the reason why you get these comments is because if you have maintained this weight and you, you're telling me that you've been this weight for six years straight, right? And people are looking at that and they're seeing that you've maintained this weight for six years. They're thinking in their head, how the fuck did somebody make it six years of their life, six years or more of them maintaining this weight and not know the negative effects of obesity? I, they obviously are ignorant because otherwise if they knew about the negative effects of obesity, they would have done something about it, uh, done, done something about it by now, but they haven't. So I'm going to enlighten them of this fact. That's probably the majority of the people. Obviously, there are going to be people that are just doing it because they're mean. But even in those cases, there's probably some underlying helpfulness to them. You know, like there's some truth to it. So even in those scenarios, they're just trying to help you out. So if when you say this shit and you go, like, you don't think I know this? If you did know this, that's concerning. It would be way better if these persons presumed that you had ignorance. Because at least then you're ignorant and then you didn't know. If you did know, that's worse. That's worse, Victoria. That's the reason. Stop. Whatever, dude. Right? And then the people who may not have the privilege to go to doctors and have medications in the way that I do, what, what, how are you benefiting them? You are not giving fat people any new information where you're like, obesity is actually bad. Bitch, like, oh my god. Especially when your like comments are unwarranted and unwanted. You can't say your comments are unwarranted or unwelcome. Like, they're just... <sighs> Why is your comments on? Like, you, you know what I'm talking about? In my comments, sometimes I just have people just, I, I remember one time somebody just literally wrote down the entire menu of Wendy's. I don't care. Like, that's great. Keep writing that Wendy's menu. That's great. Awesome, beautiful, spectacular person. Tell me about your hair care. Tell me about your elbows. Tell me about your iguanas. I don't know. I don't care, dude. It doesn't matter to me. If you have a comment section and it's physically there and it's like, you know, people, if people have access to it, they're going to write stuff. And even though you don't consider that to be warranted, which doesn't make any sense, by the way, you're literally opening it up to the people that want to write. So what the fuck are you talking about? Um, you have to expect that people are going to say things about it. And by the way, you saying that it's unwarranted to have these health advice uh, is kind of crazy given the fact that you're literally giving health advice. So what the fuck is going on? Like, how can you do it, but these other people can't? What the fuck are we talking about? You know, look, if you're telling me that the information that's in your comment section, these people saying that being overweight is bad, being obese is bad, whatever the fuck, health advice, unwanted health advice is bad. When you yourself give out the unwanted health advice, you are the precipice. You are the apex. You are the individual within question that did it first. Because if somebody was to write, if somebody was to write those, those health things, if they were going to sit there and tell you unwanted medical advice, unwanted weight loss advice, you are the reason to which they are writing that. So you were the one that initiated it. So if you're going to sit there and tell these people that they are giving you unwanted comments, unneeded comments, then you should be looking at yourself in the mirror and then also saying the same thing because that's what you're doing. You can't be upset. What the fuck is wrong with you? How can you not see this? All right. If a fat person is like, hi, I'm struggling with obesity and I would like, you know, to deal with my health issues. This is what you're doing though. You're not doing it in this particular... Man, it's, I'm sorry, dude. This woman is dumb. This, I'm sorry. This is like actually stupid. If you're going to sit there and try to gaslight me, like, oh, you need to say this in this very particular way that completely outlines the exact things, you don't have to say, hello, I am obese. I am struggling with obesity. I have a problem with overconsumption of food. If you're not saying it exactly like that, then don't give me health advice. Are you fucking stupid? Are you fucking dumb? Because you're literally doing that, but you're not doing it in the direct way. You're making videos, proclaiming fat acceptance, proclaiming that it's okay to be fat and body, whatever the fuck, be confident in your body, be a perfect, exactly the way the fuck you are. That's exactly the same, but just in a different format. So if you're gonna sit there and proclaim this needs to be exactly the way it is, it's semantics. Why are you doing that shit? Just own the fuck up, dude, stop. Stop doing that. Stop, Victoria. Stop. I think that Victoria in and of herself, she's a very intelligent individual. She has the ability to articulate very well sentences. She could she could say a lot of things, but this is ridiculous, Victoria. Like, obviously, you don't even believe this shit. The person is like, hi, I'm struggling with obesity, and I would like, you know, to deal with my health issues. I, you know, do you have any information? Can you help me? Whatever. You do that. You guys have that conversation. But if you're randomly giving unsolicited, unwanted advice to fat people, that's where the fat phobia comes in. Because why is this random person's body 
any of your business. Yes, she's dumb. I'm sorry to say it, dude. Victoria's fucking dumb. There's just there's no doubt about it in my mind at this point, dude. I was gonna give her a little bit of leeway, but I mean, there's nothing else I can say about this. Literally, like 90% of your content on TikTok is literally about your health status or some variation of that. Like maybe not your health status, but the overall health status that would contribute to somebody that's overweight or obese. And by the way, your body is literally health status. Am I lying about that? I'm probably not. So if you're concerned that somebody's commenting on your body, by the way, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. This is not going to stop the people that are doing it. This is actually going to do the complete opposite. Like, I get a lot of comments of people telling me that I'm gay. Obviously, I'm not gay, but it's okay if you want to call me gay. I'm totally fine with that. If I was, like, making a video and I was like, I'm not gay. I would never be gay. I love the female anatomy. Female anatomy all day. I love, you know, I would never fulfill another man's sexual satisfaction with my mouth. I would never do that. Like, I'm feeding into it. And people are going to latch onto that. And they're going to call me cringy. And they're going to probably do it more. But if you if you sit there and you feed into it and you go, you know, yeah, I am gay. Oh, I love penis right like then it's gonna get it's gonna get significantly less so if you don't find a lot of value into it then it's not it's like whatever so when you make these videos and you're saying like you shouldn't be commenting on my body first of all you're fucking dumb that's dumb that's really stupid especially because most of your content is literally about that your body or somebody else's bodies or whatever you can't be upset by people commenting on that shit that's crazy like that's literally most of your content so it, it just doesn't make any sense and also you are doing it too by making the content to begin with literally this video it just doesn't make sense you're literally inviting people to talk about this particular topic right am i wrong like how can you put out this video with your comments on and not expect people to talk about it you're literally inviting people to talk about the thing that you don't want them to talk about what the fuck are we doing right now it's not it's not hope that helps moral of the story is don't give people unsolicited health advice it's just dumb like i'm sorry dude it's stupid it's fucking ignorant this woman is literally backtracking on herself so heavily she doesn't even believe what she's actually saying here because she's doing it herself Rules for thee, not for me. Living as a fat person means being told your entire life that everything will be okay once you lose weight. You are living for that magical moment that you are finally thin to get the life that you want because we are told that that is the one barrier that keeps us from living the life and the experience that we want. Which is pretty much true. I mean, you guys are literally experiencing tons and tons of traumas on a daily basis that we as thin people probably don't even understand because what the fuck? Like, you know, simple things such as like being able to tie my shoe or walking down the street or I don't know, like pro taking a proper bowel movement or normal for me but for somebody like you would probably be excruciating like in tons and tons and tons of pain consistently so yes it's probably like oftentimes these people will talk about things like oh we need more accessibility we need more clothes we need this and this is like a lot of that stuff is bullshit a lot of that stuff is very very surface level and i feel like the reason why they don't talk about the things that really matter which is like the actual bodily autonomy of the, these people is because they know that there's truth to it and then also probably because they just live with it at that point like they just realize that well i have all these problems and it may or may not have to do with my weight but it's okay because this is my life now which is really really sad because can you imagine just like <laughs> having copious amounts of problems that you can actually change and a lot of people that i know that have lost a lot of weight have told me that oh my god i had no idea that i had all these problems until i lost weight but then when i lost weight i realized that i had all these problems like you don't know until you know and that sucks. A lot of dicks. Like big, fat, fucking hairy, ginormous dicks. And if your life is getting progressively ass day by day by day because you keep con keep consistently gaining weight. Or uh, if you're Victoria, you're just maintaining that whatever weight that she is for her whole life. You're not getting any younger. Your body is slowly but surely deteriorating on a daily basis. So, yes, 100%. Not only is your body getting older and older and older, which is going to expedite the process of the aging, but it's also going to expedite the process of aging because you're fat. And that's also not good. So you're literally daily getting worse. And you could be getting better. You, you could be getting better. But instead, you want to sit there and blame everybody else on your problems. But yes, um, please bestow upon us the information of why actually if you lost weight, that wouldn't actually solve any of your problems, please. We are told our fat body is the only thing standing in our way of... It, there's probably other things that are probably standing in your way of your happiness, but um, yes, if, 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 if we're only talking about the relevance of being fat, yeah, probably. I don't know why you... Like, let's see if you bring up something irrelevant here. Happiness, and once we lose weight, once we listen to them and we become smaller, then everything will be okay. The problem is that's not true. In what way is that not true? I mean, sure, you might be able to, like, 
I would just, I don't know, man, maybe there's some like downstream effects of being fat that's probably okay, or maybe she's not looking at it in the, the correct spectrum here. Like she might be looking at it as like, well, if I lose weight, that's not gonna help me grow my nails faster, or that's not gonna help my hair become more curly or some other bullshit like that that's completely irrelevant that has nothing to do with being fat. Like there might be those cases, but nobody's talking about that. Like when somebody says your life will be better if you lose weight, nobody's thinking about your nail growth. Nobody's thinking about your fucking, you know, your foot fungus alleviating. Nobody's talking about that. Like obviously you know what we're talking about. It's all relevant. Like it's it, look within the context of the situation. Nobody's talking about that other bullshit. So whatever. And time and time again, we see fat people do the work. They lose the weight. They're finally thin, and they're still not at the place where they want to be. There. Yeah, but you're probably in a better place than you were. Like, don't think that if you lose weight, you're just going to be a better like what like 400 times better person. Like, there's obviously a lot more to somebody than just weight. Obviously, but that doesn't necessarily mean that if they lose the weight, they didn't become healthier they didn't become more anabolic they didn't become more physically active they didn't become less problematic like i understand what you're saying like yes there are people are very complex people right like there's a lot of there's a lot to somebody more than just their weight but that like you saying oh these people lost weight and they didn't like alleviate all their problems therefore losing weight is not relevant what the fuck are you talking about that's such a fucking backwards way of looking at anything in life there's no way you're ever going to be satisfied 100% by anything ever like it just doesn't make sense to me that's like somebody driving a car from 2010 and getting a new 2024 car yes it's better but it's not like that much better right it's not like perfect nothing is ever going to be fucking perfect dude. there's going to be compromises with everything so yes 100% if you lose weight, your life will be improved probably by a lot, but there's not going to be like 100% improved. There's, not, there's still going to be problems. There's still going to be issues that you're going to have to deal with, but that's okay because now you have one less thing to worry about, which was the weight. That's the problem we're talking about, Victoria. Like nobody ever said, if you lose the weight, you're going to like solve fucking world hunger. Or you're going to like miraculously like be professor X and read people's minds. Like, what are you talking about? Of course still not happy in the way that they want because losing weight is not going to fix any of the internal conflict that you have it, it maybe no it's not it's not gonna you gotta focus on the wording here it's not gonna fix any of the internal conflict that you have it possibly could fix some of the internal conflicts that you have depending on what they are it's such a disingenuous way of like framing this shit it's so fucking it's so so malicious dude because she's doing this shit and it sounds right but it's also incredibly wrong because if you're telling people that if you lose weight it's not going to solve any of their problems that's gross it's going to solve a lot of their problems depending on like maybe you don't determine them to be problems because you're not looking at them as actual problems to be solved but a lot of people do determine walking and not being able to do that because of the weight as a problem so mm. Mm. If you want to be content and happy in yourself. Oh, please tell us how. Please tell us how. Weight loss is not the solution, but she's going to bestow upon us the real solution. Weight loss is not going to be a solution. That's, okay, so let us know. Let us know. Obviously, weight loss is not going to help us with anything, so please let us know what is going to be the solution, Victoria. It could definitely help, but it's not going to matter unless you. What is the purpose of telling me it could help, and you just told me it's not going to solve any of my problems? You literally said that. You literally said it's not going to help any of my problems, but then you just told me it's going to help, or it could help. Which is, it can't be both. Do the internal work and deal with your issues with your body and yourself internally. I spent years hating myself, hating my life, hating everything about myself. And then I got to a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't hate myself just because I'm fat. And because I did the work, now I am comfortable at any stage that my body exists in. Whether that be thin, fat, anywhere in between. Because I have done the work and I have combated the part inside of me that equates my body size to my worth I'm, i would just love to see what kind of work that was because all i'm hearing from you is you were trying to lose weight but then you were unsuccessful so you gave up and now you're just i guess coping with the fact that your body is overweight and you're probably trying to find reasons to i don't know solidify that as like an okay realm to be in when in reality it's probably negatively affecting you by probably i mean it's negatively affecting you on a daily basis and you're having all these problems to deal with on a daily basis but you're gonna make videos and say that you're okay at the weight that you are when obviously that's kind of impractical to say, like that's crazy as fuck to say, but hey, you know what? Live your, live your best life. Hashtag slay queen edges. Hashtag you go girl. Yes, queen. I know that being thin is not going to fix my problem. How do you, okay. It just depends on what your problem is, right? Like it'd be like a guy that's 400 pounds and you ask him, hey, what's your problem? And you go, well, my problem is I don't have any umbrellas. And you, you, th th obviously, if he loses weight, that's not going to solve his problem, right? Because that's not going to increase the amount of umbrellas that he has. So if your problem has nothing to do with your weight and you determine that the weight is not going to fix your problem, okay, sure. But nobody is going to think about it like that, especially if they do have problems with their weight.
What the fuck is the point of this video, Victoria? Like, what are you even talking about right now? It's completely irrelevant. It has nothing to do with the actual status of obesity. And the thing that sucks is, like, fat people are continuously, continuously pushed on this idea that, like, all we have to do to be happy is to lose weight. Look, Victoria, I get it. Oh, man, I'm sorry, dude. This is, like, I gotta, like, we gotta fucking stop this fucking video, bro. This is actually, this is actually kind of hurting me a little bit, dude. If, if your claim is that if you have problems that are not due, not not dealt to you by the effects of being fat and or obese losing weight is not going to help you i agree if you want if your if your problem in your life is that you are not good at washing dishes and you and somebody tells you that you need to lose weight obviously losing weight is not going to help you but if your problem and most people that are fat and or obese will have these problems is walking long distances or even walking in general or taking showers and properly cleaning yourself or tying your shoe because you can't bend over or having actual good health care or being able to work out or having good dietary functions, then losing weight is probably going to help you. That's what we're saying. I don't know what the relevance is of, oh, I have internal issues that are not due to weight and if I lost weight, that wouldn't help me. I don't know what that, why that's even relevant. I don't even know why you would even bring those up as issues if we're talking about obesity. What the fuck are you even talking about right now? What the hell are you talking about? Like, what is, what are you, what is that? What are we doing right now, Victoria? This has absolutely, am I fucking dumb? Can like, somebody please let me know down below? Like, am I the one that's stupid here? Is she not like just bringing up random things to try to justify the realm of being obese? By saying like, oh, if you don't, if, if obesity is not the problem, then it's not a problem. No fucking duh. Who would have fucking knew? Who would have fucking known? If you don't look at it as an issue, then it's not an issue. Who would have fucking known? And then they do it. They lose the weight and they're still not happy. And it's just so difficult to watch. They did what they were told to do. And they had no one to tell them, hey, that's not going to fix your problem. You got to learn to like yourself just how you are. All right, I'm not even going to bother, dude. I'm just going to rehash it, basically. Because when you truly like yourself, it doesn't matter what size you are. That's... Sometimes I feel like these people live in a different world. Sometimes I feel like these people are living in a universe where everybody's perfect and nobody judges anybody on anything else. Like everybody's just perfect exactly the way they are and all this other stuff. Listen, if somebody is actually having problems with their body and whatever the fuck and issues with walking and all this stuff and you tell them they're perfect or they should be accepting themselves exactly the way they are and they shouldn't want to change, they're, you're, it's, you're making it worse. You're making it worse. Because if somebody's like doing drugs and you tell them they're perfect – they're going to continue to do drugs because now you just reconfirm their biases of doing drugs. So it's not helpful. It's just not. Again, do what you want with your body. But I promise you can't say do whatever you want with your bot. Okay, whatever, dude. I promise you, losing weight is not going to change anything unless you've healed yourself. Man, okay, whatever, bro. This woman is fucking delusional. <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing else I can say about that, that, dude. Whatever. Dumb, stupid, fucking horrid. Doesn't make any sense. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but you know what does matter? You matter. Thank you for watching today's video. I appreciate you guys so tremendously. Thank you anybody that's a subscriber, anybody that is a member of the channel. If you did watch the video today, I appreciate everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all the stuff down below. I would love to know your opinion about Victoria. Crazy delusional person that gaslights you into believing that you're the one that's actually incorrect about losing weight, which doesn't even make sense because this person is literally perpetually suffering on a daily basis. But anyway, if you watched today's video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in coach. It's a coach bag. There's nothing in it. There's literally nothing in it. Oh, no. There's a Pokeball in it. There's a Pokeball in the coach bag. Yes. Um, leave coach down below. But anyway, guys, you're beautiful specimens of human being. Thank you. You have so much patience. Beautiful, amazing person. You're so amazing. You're so beautiful. I care for you so deeply. I bet that when we, 100 years from now, we're probably going to have shrines of you because you're so amazingly lubricated. There are going to be manuals on how to be as lubricated as you are and the correct procedures on how to lubricate the insides of your mouth through the realms of water or how to properly lubricate the elbows or the kneecaps, how to like, you know, put some lotions or whatever else, whatever you put on there, how to whiten the teeth because you know how to do that so properly. Your face, amazing. Your eyebrows, delicious. Your kneecaps, delectable. They're so great. Your smell so good today. I love the way that you format your body. You are responsible too, super responsible. And to top it off, you're not bleg. But anyway, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter. Uh, all that stuff will be listed down below in the description of this channel and the description of this video. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.